Hey everyone, Tim again from the Word of Life Church. Our address is 3342 Midway Street, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37921. That's the Word of Life Church. Our pastor is Junior Mount, and <clears throat> as always, we'd like to give you an open invitation. Come out and be with us for service. Uh, been having once again still you know, wonderful, wonderful services in the Lord and seeing, you know, prayers being answered and uh, <laughs> I'll sh here in just a second I'll share with you a, a, a probably not a unique type of situation that the Lord blessed but uh, and he certainly done it before but uh, it was just uh, it was one of those things that just had to make you smile you now uh, <clears throat> let me go ahead and give our church service announcements before we get into it go ahead and be turning with me back to uh, Decided to go back to the book of Colossians, but actually at this time we're going to start in chapter 2, uh, at verse 1. So that'll be Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. Uh, our uh, service times are as follows. We have Sunday school at 10 a.m., worship service at 11. We come back at 6 in the afternoon for our evening service. And we also have a midweek mid service, <laughs> if I can talk here. Uh, at uh, Wednesday night, uh, 7 p.m. So, uh, make plans to come out and be with us. Still haven't found out. They've not announced it when the next Praise Team Youth uh, service will be. Still, well, getting almost toward the end of the month and haven't heard yet. So, it's getting, it's possible we may not have one this month. I don't know for sure. Uh, I haven't heard announced. Normally, it's the last around the last Saturday of the month. So. Um, as I said, if I find that out uh, beforehand, <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of time for, to prepare, um, then uh, I'll announce it in one of these videos. Um, but at any rate, I hope this video finds everyone well and uh, hope that it goes out and helps someone, uh, something that will be said through the Holy Ghost, speaking through His Word, through me. Uh, trying to be an obedient servant to him and do what he would have me to do. Not that I'm anything. Now, in the flesh, I'm, I, I'm nothing. I'm a nobody. But praise the Lord, I am someone in his spirit that dwells in me. And we thank the Lord for that. You know, we have something. A lot of us have, we can sit here and we take it for granted. We have something the world doesn't have. That's the salvation that the Lord gives, that only the Lord gives. No other God. No, the false god that's worship can offer that. In truth, oh, there's one that says that you know after you die you're going to go to heaven, you know, but you've got to kill as many uh, people that's not of that religion before you go, and if you go, you're going to receive seventy virgins, you know. Uh, sure, it's there's there's a lot that promises that's not going to be able to deliver. You know what, my Lord will deliver each and every time while we're down here in this flesh if you seek him while he may be found salvation he can deliver you while you're down here and just as well if brother Sam preached the other night uh, at, the, uh, at the start of the revival at North Lonsdale Church of God which went on very well and, and had a good time and it was good services preach about the three Hebrew children you know what they said now I've, I've quoted it before said that no matter what said uh, our God will deliver us and even if he doesn't meaning you know if, he, if you king if he throw us in the fire and we just all of a sudden just burn or <laughs> explode or whatever doesn't matter doesn't matter we're still not going to serve you and your idols and your demonic gods and we're not going to give in to your uh, ways uh, that you've got in your kingdom um, so they had their mind made up. Let me ask you the same thing. Have you made up your mind whom you're going to serve? I can truly say as for me and my house, as Joshua said, we're, we are going to serve the Lord as much as possible, as much as he wants us to, as far as he wants us to. Don't know what lies ahead as far as what he would have us do except to walk in his will. And that's what we're supposed to do. Sometimes it's... It, well, well, it is always a faith walk of not knowing exactly what's coming. Oh, the Bible tells us when we see things that are coming, prophecies coming to pass, 
but sometimes for each and our individual walk in God, a lot of times, see, see that's a, isn't it kind of funny that way though? We can see all the things that are coming. We got an, an assurance in the end if we're say that we're going to be in heaven or we're going to be with the Lord when we leave this life. But a lot of times, we don't know exactly what our each personal walk is going to go through and what we're going to encounter sometimes. I thought, I thought well, we know all about, talks about all the last days, the final days that's coming. We're seeing all the prophecies that God's Word talks about coming to pass. But yet for sometimes, or for, for sometimes, <laughs> we, do, we don't know the next step that we're supposed to take. That's where we got to seek God. I know you, a lot of you go through this. I know a lot of you think the same thing about that. It's just like the Lord. I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of at the end of my rope. Not really of any problems, but in my walk. And I'm not sure which direction that I need to go. Well, that's when we've got to pray and really seek the Lord. Um, I tell you directly to your heart, you know, to your heart, say, I, you know, I want you to follow this path. It could be through a another person, prophet, someone telling you, uh, you know, through the Holy Ghost, and it will bear witness of the truth if it comes to pass. So what no one a prophet versus a false prophet when it comes true, when it comes to pass. So, uh, at any rate, anyway, getting to, to my, not, <laughs> I'm not going to say it's a funny story because it's it was a blessing of God, even though it may sound, may sound crazy to some, but, I, you know, I know the Lord here hears and answers prayers. I, I, I know that. That's just part of my faith, part of my belief, uh, part of just knowing it's just knowing that he does. Well, I had a or have a niece. Actually, uh, <laughs> I guess you call her a niece-in-law. <laughs> but she, uh, her, and her little brother got this little puppy. Okay, and you know. Uh, People out there will lie to you, and uh, or just just not know about certain things. Uh, thankfully, my wife worked for several years as a uh, veterinary technician, and knows a lot how how to deal with with animals, cat and cats and dogs. Man, that was what they saw. Um, so it didn't look like trying to make a long story short before we get into the words. I'm doing this for a reason, okay? I'm showing you how God blesses and He answers prayers. So, so at any rate, they asked, called my wife and asked her. Her brother did, and <clears throat> told him what was, or she, he told her what was going on and how the puppy was acting, and uh, of course, she, you know, my wife said that told me that it doesn't sound good. So a little bit before service yesterday we go and look and by the way it's acting. Uh, my wife's kind of come to the conclusion that he had some, some neurological type problems and it couldn't walk right, it couldn't run, it wasn't, you know, just you know, just was not a puppy. You know, puppies are just running around and just into everything. So that was kind of bad news there at the moment and uh, so uh, instead of uh, my niece coming home and you know finding it in the kennel or the box they keep it in deceased we took it and uh, we actually took it to the church you know we, we were heading to service so and we went there before we went to church so we left it you know, had it in the box and my wife took it and her on the schoolroom that she teaches out of, you know, closed the doors and kept it in there because you know you can't. Of course, you can't. You don't leave it out in the vehicle. So you know, as I was saying, people would say, "My, they've got, they brought an animal in the church." Well, just, just hang on, just listen. So it's downstairs. You know, no hope. 
So at one point at the end of the service when everyone, you know, when the preacher says all hearts and minds clear, anybody have anything to say before we close? Uh, my wife's uh, sister-in-law speaks up and, you know, says it and basically said this <laughs> along the same lines I said it. Look, I know this may sound crazy to some, uh, but in the very end, there's a lot of people said no, and I said no, you because know, you know you can pray for it. The Lord says you can pray for anything. Doesn't mean He's going to give it to you, but you know you can pray for anything. You can ask the Lord for anything. He said, you know, asked, you know, that your joy may be full. But she asked for prayer, if that we could bring that small puppy, and you know I've got a little dog laying right beside me right here, and she's a member of the of the family, you know. But you know, you get attached to your animals in the Lord, as my time pastor said last night, and so I say, the Lord gives us these animals as companions. You know, there are some elderly people, I know I'm spending a little bit of time here, but some elderly people I've known in the past, that was really all they had on a daily basis was a cat or a dog. Most of them are dogs, you know, most cats are kind of aloof and. <laughs> Uh, not really. Uh, there's some lap cats. We got some lap cats, believe it or not. Uh, but and our dog's definitely a lap dog. Uh, so at any rate, she asked and you know gave an explanation of what she was asking and asked if she could we could bring the puppy upstairs, you know, and have it prayed for. Of course, you know, uh, Brother Junior, our pastor, he said, sure, sure, no problem with that whatsoever. You know, like I said, the Lord says, we, you know, we can pray for anything. So we bring it up, and of course immediately everyone is just, you know, gathered around. You know, everybody, everybody I, I, if you don't, if you look at puppies and kittens and don't sit there and like them and everything like that, there must be something wrong with you, your heart. Uh, especially if there, you know that there's something wrong with them and that they're suffering or that they're hurting or whatever, something's wrong. But at any rate, we prayed for that puppy, and my wife took it to the vet clinic that she uh, that it had worked at in the past. And uh, even by this morning, you wouldn't believe it. It was the same puppy. It was running around. Now this is before she even took it to the vet, okay, and had it checked out, having what they call a puppy check, running around playing, it's eating. Just playing with me, biting at my feet, and playing with me, and I had that little growl and everything. And I was in it, it, totally different, like a 180 degree turnaround. Took it to the vet, checked it out. Said, I, I, you know, I can't find anything wrong with this dog. This is like a brand new dog. The Lord answered and honored that prayer. And I was glad to see it because you don't want to see anyone heartbroken over some, anything. But especially if it's a family member too, you don't want to see them hurt over something like that. And you can get attached to these animals. You can. I know because I'm attached to my, I'm attached to this little dog. I told my wife the other day, and hey, this is me, this is me bearing my soul, kind of. I told my wife the other day, when... This little dog we have reaches the end of her days, then then it's going to be it's going to be very hard on me. As I'll, I'm almost being uh, inconsolable uh, and uh, kind of uh, you know hard to hard to describe. You don't know until it's going to happen. You know, of course, people and animals are different. You know that I, I know that. We know the Bible talks about the man, the spirit of the man, the goeth upward, and the beast goeth down. There are preachers that are pre that preach that you're going to uh, that you're going to have your all of your pets that you've ever had that you lost in in heaven. Well, he needs to be able to show me that because uh, I've never found it, and he really didn't give any scripture to back it up. He just said in his opinion. And I remember thinking at the time, boy, that, that his next, his next service, whatever it was, <clears throat> Wednesday if they have a Wednesday night service or Sunday or whatever, they're going to be doubling their 
congregation in Dublin wants an offering place since he said that. Well, it's because I've heard people make statements saying, hey, if my, it's not heaven, if my dog or my cat is not going to be there, so, you know, if they're not there, I don't want to go. What a foolish statement to make. Look, I know, as I said, being attached to these animals, but you gotta say, you got to understand, there are companions, God gave them to us, and we thank them for it, but, you know, at one point, we've got to let go of them, unfortunately. But look, we're going to have uh, one of the reasons this guy uh, that I can't believe he said that. It, it says all things become new. There's going to be a new heaven, a new earth. God's going to wipe away all of our tears if we. That's why a lot of people talk about. Well, you know, they can see you. Oh, your your, your grandparents, your parents can see you from heaven and everything. No, they can't. That would not be heaven. If they could see all the stuff that you were going through, a sickness you were going through, or something like that, that wouldn't be heaven. If they could see what you were, the things you were going through, or what was going on in this world, God promised us new emotions. He said He'd wipe away all of our tears. To me, that means new emotions, and we're not going to be sad. It's just going to be joy fulfilled for eternity. Okay, so. That's kind of my answer, and, and that's, that's been two or three years ago since I've heard him say that. So I don't know. I don't know. It'll, I don't keep track when somebody says something foolish like that. And that's okay. Now some of you out there that listen, you may believe that, and that's fine if you want to believe that. I just don't see any evidence really of it. Uh, you know that. Uh, see, it, it, what I'm trying to push through is that would show a sign of it, that we're still attached down to this world if we're thinking about what we had in the previous life, this life that we have now. And if all things become new, for, you know, then, as I said, we're not going to be worried or really remember exactly what went on down here, all the heartache and all the stuff like that, because you're not going to have any of that when you're with the Lord. Does everyone understand what I'm saying? Hey, if I'm wrong, hey, whatever. That's hey, great. Everybody can have all the animals they've ever lost. And good grief. Some people had a lot of animals before, I can tell you that. Uh, but at any rate, I spent a little bit of time with that because I wanted to share that with you. Because that, there out there, it, see, even something like that, that increases your faith. That you see something like that. We know, and I know the Lord hears and answers prayers. There's no doubt. I've seen it. That's just that. This is just another confirmation, and it was glad to see too because it was my niece <laughs> that the, that it was for. Now, now, now she, uh, you know, she worked today, but I, I you know, I guarantee that they, you know, because because after the visit, we took the puppy back to their house and let them have it back. And I know she is going to be relieved and happy. And that's what I wanted to see, was her not to be hurt, was her to be happy, and see that will increase everyone else's faith too, seeing that. They, and we send it out. We send it out through text. Everybody's like, hey, Lord bless. This 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 prayer just for this small animal, the Lord bread, uh, blessed. Imagine what else he can do for you if you ask him, if you're saved, walking in God's will. So at any rate, spend a little bit of time on that, but I just wanted to share that because there was other things that went along with it that I want to bring up as well. And uh, at the very crux, the very core of the matter, but what I'm saying is, is you can ask God for anything. Doesn't mean He's going to give it to you. You know, don't say, you know, like like, like a magical wish or something like that. You know, you you rub the rub the lamp or you know. <laughs> you know, get your Bible up and rub it and expect, you know, like a, a genie to come out and, you know, grant you three wishes. The oh, Lord, oh, I wish and pray that there's a uh, Cadillac Escalade out in the car or out in the driveway right now. And all of a sudden jump up and we're out there and it'd be out there something like that. The Lord, you know, uh, uh, the Lord's not a genie. He's not, you know, uh, you know, with three wishes or something like that. You pray for something that's close to your heart. And most of all, Yes, you can pray for things down here, okay? There's no doubt about that. And it's up to the Lord whether or not He's going to bless you with it or not. 
you may think it's a blessing while at time while uh, all the while the Lord it knows that it's going to be actually instead of, it's going to be a cursing to you instead of a blessing so he's not going to do that to you I've heard people say sometimes they prayed and prayed and prayed and it seemed like they just <laughs> basically bug, bugged the Lord to death and the Lord comes through and eventually answers that prayer and they get what they wanted and it turns into a cursing instead of a blessing Lord saying, all right, you've asked for this and asked for this, and that's so fine. You know, here it is. Uh, her testimony <laughs> before me times. So the Lord does hear and he answers our prayers. We're his children. He loves us. He wants us to, he wants to see us happy. He wants us to have joy, knowing that he is a father to us from heaven. And it says down here, we're not to call anyone father except our father in heaven. We have an earthly father. Most people don't use the word father anymore. So it's, it's, well, yeah, a lot do, but it, we're, we're down south here, so we say dad or daddy or something like that. Uh, but anyway, I just want to share that. Uh, good prayer. Uh, you know, the Lord just moved in a mighty way, and I was happy because I, like, I don't like to see anything suffer, mm -hmm. any animal. Of course, of course, any human being suffer or anything. I don't see any, anything of God's creation suffer um, so at any rate uh, God bless so uh, just uh, keep remembering speaking of prayer requests keep, keep remembering a lot of our church members uh, in, in prayer uh, and I'll go through each and every one of them but you know a lot of them have either have sickness or you know they're uh, in the hospital or something like that uh, we have a few that's uh, that and in, in need of uh, prayer from you guys and uh, you know there's brothers and sisters in Christ and people I'm talking to that understand the power of prayer you know what I'm talking about uh, so you know pray for them and uh, we'll, we'll uh, pray for your church and your members and your brothers and sisters in Christ and let's just all just come together and worship together let's, let's get through these differences and denominational uh, you know blockages and some people it just seems like they live to war against another denomination and rail against another denomination I don't like doing that sometimes I'll bring something up that another denomination believes in but I do it bring it up because to line it up with the word of God if it doesn't line up with the word of God then it's man's doctrine not or tradition and not God's word or his will of what they're they're trying to preach or teach. Now, I will bring that up. Of course, I, I don't. I don't say names in, on, in situations like that. Now, now, of course, I'm giving them a, a uh, an invitation to like a revival, another church. I'll give names and stuff like that. But I'm talking about something like that. I don't give any names because that's just not. <laughs> that's just as I say. Just, that's not kosher, as they say. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and get into the Word of God. I've drawn on enough, but uh, I wanted to, you know, spend a little bit of time and to just tell you that uh, that the Lord still hears and answers prayers, even even the small ones like that. So at any rate, Colossians chapter two and verse one. Uh, let's let's start reading. It says in verse one, "For I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you." And for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. So, you know, Brother Paul, we talk about the Lord stayed in prison a lot. <laughs> he, uh, of course, he knew that was coming. The Lord told him that he was going to be suffering much for the kingdom of God. He did evil to the church of God, to the churches of God, to God's people. Before the Lord, as I like to say, arrested him on the road to Damascus and made him do a 180. <laughs> and you know now, you know he's writing letters to the churches. Became a mighty message in the Book of Acts. And I want this for myself. And all you Christians should want something. He said he each he increased in power. That's what we want. We want to increase in power. Hey, each and every day, if possible. And you got to be able to bust through the enemy's barrier 
you know, as I've given a testimony, most of the time when I set up this computer out before, you know, I don't do many news updates anymore because there's a bunch of people out there that have a lot more views than I do when 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 I uh, try to do a news update. So I sort of kind of let them take the, uh, you know, now if it's something pretty serious, obviously I'll, I'll still bring it up. But at any rate, uh, I just let them do it. But. <clears throat> Paul was writing a lot of these epistles from prison to the churches, and apparently he said, what conflict I have for you and for them, allow it to see it, because they have not seen my face in the flesh, never even knew Paul. You know, at first, everyone was scared of him because they knew you know, he was uh, you know, the one going around killing Christians and, uh, you know, and uh, putting, putting them in jail, uh, you know, trying to destroy Christianity. Uh, but now, instead of being Saul, he's had his change, and he's Paul now. And said, of course, he's in prison, but the Lord said, you know, hey, I wanna, I'm gonna sh he said he was going to show him what all he's going to have to suffer for him. And, you know, Paul went, I listed some of those sufferings, you know, being shipwrecked, you know, being out in the deep for, you know, days of time. I, I, can you imagine that? floating on a you know plank or something of a, in a shipwreck out just the middle of the, the ocean? Uh, that just, uh, ooh, man. Now, I know the Lord had his hand on him and anybody that was with him that he, you know, that the Lord wanted to be with him. Um, because, you know, believe me, I wouldn't want to be in a small little piece of wood floating around in the ocean. <laughs> Uh, for for you know a few nights uh, you know black can't see anything don't know what's swimming around you <laughs> or anything like that uh, so you know Paul went through a few he knew a few things he was a very smart man beforehand because that he was raised up at the feet of Gamaliel which was apparently a very highly regarded and intelligent teacher of the rabbinical laws and the Old Testament, as we call it nowadays, um, so he was raised to his feet. So Paul knew, Paul knew the law, and as many some as many as today, the Messianic Jews that have actually they've got it now. They understand. They've been they they've had visitation from the ages. Have been some, uh, give the testimony. Even some Muslims, the Lord Jesus has come to them in a dream and revealed Himself to them. And they understand and they've converted over and said, hey, you know, this is the truth. <laughs> you know, what we did before was nothing. It was in the flesh. We were just murderers, you know. But with the Lord Jesus, they have eternal life now. So, you know, you get back to Paul. Uh, he you know, he was a smart man, knew it, and he could, he could debate with, you know, him. He was a Roman citizen as well. But, you know, he knew the law. He could debate with the chief priests and all that, and it was—if you remember—it was the very ones that gave him license, basically carte blanche, they call it, you know, papers to go and arrest these Christians and jail them, kill them, you know, whatnot. So he was smart. He knew what he was doing. He knew things of the past. He and he knew who it was that he served after. That incident, as we'll call it, when he got arrested on the road to Damascus, the Lord stopped him in his tracks. And then, and then what he told Ananias, he said, you know, this man Paul is coming to you, or man Saul is coming to you, and you're going to pray for him. He's blind. You know, I'm paraphrasing all this, of course, just trying to get the story. Uh, even Ananias was like, Lord, I've heard, I've heard of this guy. Uh, he's done this. He's killed Christians, he, you know, he's, you know, just, just, you know, tearing churches down, you know, and whatnot. Uh, are you sure about this? <laughs> How many of us have done that before? That's at the Lord, when he tells you to do something, we, we, first thing we do is we're in the flesh, we get in our flesh and question him. Oh, uh, Lord, are you sure about that? Are you, are you absolutely sure that you want me to do that? Because this, because that. If he tells you he wants you to do something, he's going to give you the ability to do it, and it's going to be okay, all right? And look at it this way. Let's give you a safety catch here, safety net. Even, and it may be his will, if something happens and you're saved, what have you got to lose? You're going to be with 
you're going to go to heaven anyway. You're going to be with the Lord. So obey him in all things, no matter what it is, no matter what he tells you, whatever he leads you to do, do that. Don't be as, as the, the, the world nowadays and the church nowadays. No, uh, talk about that. I heard the pastor mention that. He's heard people say you can't tell the church from the world. Now, in some cases, I will, I will say that that's true. But in many cases, and, I, and I, I'll just be, I'll, I tell you what, I'll speak for our church. Because I know that because I go there. I speak for our church. No, we don't do what the things the way the course of the world does. Now, there's some, there's some churches, yeah, that are, that are of the world, that do the things of the world, that allow the things of the world inside. They allow, they've allowed the enemy to come in and take over and take up a seat behind the pulpit, and now anything goes. So, I didn't mean to get off on that, but I know, you know, Lord knows why. I know his word will not return void. Uh, so there's people that hadn't seen people, or, pardon me, People that hadn't seen Paul in the flesh is talking about here and mentioned Laodicea. Laodicea was a very troubled church. If you can you agree with me on that, especially you, you Christians out there that do Bible study and read and study God's word a lot and you you'll know when it talks about uh, the churches in the book of Revelation, <clears throat> Laodicea being one of them. Uh, it was probably one of the worst ones. And we hear a lot too preaching that, you know, we don't want to be and a lot of a lot are. We don't want to be. We do not want to be allowed to see in church, allowing everything in, allowing everything of the world in, allowing the teachings of paganistic worship and uh, you know uh, God and goddess worship, little G God, not not you know uppercase G God, meaning the only one a true God, Jehovah God. But <clears throat> yes, every church is allowed all this stuff in. Even the whole idea of the, I'm sure you guys have heard it about the Chrislam, you know, the, the melding together of Christianity is and the Islamic faith. <laughs> that don't work, people. That don't work. The two are totally opposed to each other. There's no, there's no way they can melt together. We do not, I don't care what the Pope says, I don't care what the President says, I don't care what anybody he gets up in front of a camera that's supposed to be somebody in this world. He gets up and says, Christianity and Islam are not the same. We do not worship the same God. We don't, we don't worship the same God as any other of the religions. We know we have a Savior, the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. No other religion, religion has that. I still almost some at some points hate to use the word religion because you heard me say it before I can be religious about doing anything what I'm talking about is a personal walk a personal relationship not just a religion but a personal relationship with the son of God and that leads you to the father and we have an advocate with the father the Lord Jesus sitting at the right hand of the father making intercession and prayer for you and I and he hears our prayers and he answers them. Just gave you proof of the small little prayer when we open up this video and start talking. Even more so, hey, I, I could tell you much more, much, much more, many more blessings of, of God on people sick, needing something. The Lord gives it to them. The Lord blesses it with them. But unfortunately, sometimes we don't bless God back. We take the prize as so called take the blessing and just all of a sudden just that's it we just as I said you know you said that's that's one of my pet peeves I guess you call it, you know one of my uh, little soapbox issues says <clears throat> you know treat treating God as a uh, an old shoe an old comfortable shoe or a, a, a back of the closet God you know, put him at the back of the closet, shut the door when you don't need him. But when you're in dire need, uh, you know, your rent isn't, you know, you can't pay it. Your, your car is about to be towed away or you don't have any food or, you know, whatever, whatever the problem is. And you pray <clears throat> and the Lord blesses you sometimes in, in a way that, uh, you know, that's, that's just beyond thought. And a lot of times he does that. Uh, sometimes we don't recognize it. 
and then you know when you're done with him you just you know hey well i appreciate i appreciate all that we'll see you next time we need you and just you know push him back to the back of the closet <laughs> little people how many times to say this <laughs> lord is not your he's not like he's not your co-pilot He's not your co-pilot. He is your pilot. If he is not first and foremost in your life, guiding, directing, leading, then he's not in your life. You, you're, you've done something somewhere. If you were saved at one point and he, and he was first in your life, but now he's not. Something happened somewhere. You've left your first love, as God's word said need to get back in tune with what God's and, and, and be thankful for what he's blessed you with because some people have to struggle hard and God only knows why maybe it's a learning process you know maybe it's a way to make people appreciate things more more appreciate the blessings of God more we have to go through and actually work hard to be able to accomplish something that's not saying the Lord can't bless you just like that because I've seen the Lord bless just like that prayer goes through and before you know it before the day's end there's a praise report that goes out that the Lord has blessed and answered that prayer in a positive way of course so yeah the Lord can bless you but anyway taking back this talking about the people allowed to see it we don't want to be as allowed to see in church if you don't know what I'm talking about go to the book of Revelations start in verse 1 and read through about the, the seven churches and you eventually hit the allowed to see in church and look what it says about it. Okay? Might get into Revelation. When you really need into Revelation, it's been kind of itching to get into that and talk about that. But uh, do that. If, we, if you want to find out what he's talking about, if it's for them allowed to see it. And that name always just stands out for me just because of what they were. Uh, we don't want to be them. We don't want to, you know, we, and they say that there are too many allowed to see in churches. So, at any rate, verse 2 says, that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding oh here we go didn't we talk about this in the verse or chapter one through the night it says full assurance of the understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ and, oh, and here it is it's what we talked about come on now think about this let this resonate in your head in whom are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge hallelujah wisdom and knowledge he is calling treasures not, not saying that new car not saying that new house what now saying, you know, this, that, and talking about treasures of wisdom and knowledge concerning his will and his word and the universe. You know, I want all the wisdom and knowledge the Lord can pack down into this finite skull of his word, of his ways, of him to know the mysteries of creation, to know the mysteries of God. And, you know, who say, well, they well, even see God. Well, you look and you look at Jesus, and Jesus even told the apostles when they asked about, well, how long before you show us, when, how, when you want to show us the Father? He said, you know, how long have I been with you? The Lord Jesus answered, I'm kind of paraphrasing him. He said, how long have I been with you? If you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Amen. But I want those treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I don't want this to be about me wanting, wanting this, wanting, you know, I, don't you want that? Don't you want the wisdom and knowledge that the Lord can give? Of course, you must be born again. He's not going to share everything with you. And, you know, there's, of course, there's people and, of course, they use science and everything. And I, got another thing I, love, and I love science. I love scientific type stuff. I study scientific type uh, stuff. I, get, I really get into it sometimes. Uh but I, I use it to confirm God's creation. I don't need to. <laughs> I know God's truth. I know he did it all. He created it all. You know, no big surprise there. But there's things in this scientific that we look at and uh, 
the, the, that you know, and the, and the things that they try to do. You know, I heard uh, Brother Russ Dizdar. He talked about it. He, he did kind of a little funny little thing. He said he said they believe they can pull God's hand down from heaven, take a little sample of it, and put it under a microscope and solve the mysteries of all creation and stuff like that. <laughs> They're not going to be able to do that. Let's just say that to, in, from the get go. Uh, but in Him. In God, and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are, all, are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That, that, that's the linchpin, that's key right there. Treasures. There's treasures to know his wisdom, his knowledge, what to do. It, being filled with the Holy Ghost, that's definitely a treasure. Leading guides you, using the wisdom and knowledge he gives you to do the right thing and to say the right things and to convey a message maybe for someone to be a help to someone to be uplifting to someone and just having that wisdom and knowledge concerning as I said fascinating to me the whole creation of who God is so you want to get to know him more and, each, and more each day you want to get to know him and know the mysteries of him the deep the hidden things I know there's some things he's not going to sh share with us, being humans by night, because one, for one thing, he doesn't have to. <laughs> Number two, we are finite with these minds. If we knew everything, if everything packed in here, well, the Lord could make it. I guess he would have to hold her head together or it would explode of all the wisdom and knowledge of creation. What's happened before? What's happening now? What's to come? We have God's word to tell us that, but there's so much more so much more wisdom and knowledge and spiritual understanding that he can give you. I want that. I crave that. I desire that. I like discovery. I'm kind of, you know, that's, I guess that goes along with the nature as I talk about. I love science. I love finding stuff out. I love seeing things new and investigating things and everything. And that's, that's that goes along with that the treasures of the wisdom and knowledge and spiritual understanding that we want to have in God or that I want to have in God. I know you guys out there are the same way. You've got to be the same way. You Christians out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. You want to have more wisdom, more knowledge of God and His ways and what He does. I crave it and I pray for it. And hey, I covet your prayers. I pray and I ask you guys out there for me right now to ask the Lord on my behalf to give me more wisdom and knowledge and spiritual understanding. A lot of times I don't ask, ask prayer for me, something like that. But in a case like this, I'm going to ask you for that if you, if you wouldn't mind to pray for that. More wisdom, more knowledge, more spiritual understanding of God, of creation, of His Son, Lord Jesus Christ, and all spiritual understanding and everything. And I appreciate it. And I'll do the same for you. I'll pray for you. <laughs> pray for the, that the Lord to bless you with whatever you need, whatever you desire from Him. Now, as I said, it will be something that you just want. You know, you don't drive by a car lot or something like that. That's not what I'm saying. A lot of times our blessings are in the spiritual ways of things. <clears throat> Excuse me. In verse 4, it said, And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Uh oh, that's been used in another place before. Who does the beguilement? Of course. The devil, of course. His demonic spirits, his fallen angels. You know, they're still coming back. They're coming back. In force. At one time, they wanted to be worshipped as gods. And it's about, it talks about they're, they're, that they were gods, many lower G gods. Demonic gods of old that were worshipped. Now I could go through all the names of the Old Testament. Uh, uh, you know, false gods and everything like that. But, you know, no point. Just suffices to say that, yeah, at one point man worshipped many gods. Of course, you know, the Greek gods and, you know, the Roman Roman gods. They were kind of the same thing, just went by different names. Well, you know, where do we think? Where do you think we got the planet names? Like Jupiter and Saturn and Mars and all that stuff. So, <laughs> uh, and Paul even said behind the, uh, behind these idols were demonic spirits, basically. It's what's behind them. 
seeking to be worshipped along with the fallen angels, seeking to be worshipped as gods. They're not gods. They're nowhere near gods. They they lost their anointing. I'm not going to get into where I'm talking about not 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 yet soon, but not yet. The fallen angels and the demonic spirit are two separate things. People want to believe when the angels fell, they became demons, and then they've changed, and now they look like have they got horns and you know bat wings and stuff like that. We'll get into that at some other one. Interesting study. We'll get into that eventually, but you know, uh, but no, I don't believe that. I believe <clears throat> angels are angels, and uh, demonic spirits and clean spirits are a different entity altogether. And I'll give reasons for that. And you can look it up and do your own research and see what you think. How's that? But anyway, he said, lest any man should beguile you, that man will beguile you through the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. I'm not, talk I'm not talking in a physical manner. I'm talking about, hey, you know, you're at this church. God's blessing you. Just a quick example, and this just popped in my head. And I, want, I guess I, that's why the Lord wants me to use it as an example. Pastoring a church of maybe 50, 60 people, small church, considered now these days, small church. Person comes along, loves your preaching, he's visiting around these churches, has paperwork for a minister to look at and saying, this, if you come to our church and pastor our church, this is what we're going to offer you. You're going to get the parsonage, you're going to get a house to live in rent free, you're going to have a car, a brand new car that you're not going to have to pay for, no payments, you know, but you're going to preach and you're going to, but, you, but the, the linchpin is, you know, we've got a deacon board, so you're going to have to pass everything by them that you preach and if they don't like it, then you're going to have to change your message. wonder how many times that's happened. I'd say a lot more than we realize. So the people get beguiled, the devil beguiled with the things of this world. The same way the devil came to Jesus trying to beguile him with the things of this world. Excuse me. Stupid no. Uh The way the devil enticed the Lord. You know, at the very end, you know, the very end enticed him with all the kingdoms of the world. You know, did the devil not know that the Lord owned all that anyway? Well, of course he did. But the Lord was still in the flesh, been fasting in the wilderness for 40 days, weak and hungry. Imagine, imagine how you'd feel and how you'd be weakened that long, 40 days, 40 nights, you know, fasting and praying. We can't go one day without fasting and praying, without thinking of what we're fasting about each and every minute. Even when you're praying, it pops in your head. So let's say food. One, one, one of my weak points. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. You know, you're thinking of it while you're sitting there praying. You're fasting that day. You're thinking about a big thick hamburger or a steak on the grill or whatever or something. You're thinking about that when you're trying to pray and seek God and fast. The devil's going to throw stuff like that in your mind and try to beguile you with those enticing words. Oh, do we, oh you know, it's just a, don't have to worry about it. You know, you've done enough. You did half a day. To just go in there and just, you know, quit. Just don't worry about the praying or anything. You prayed enough. Just go in there and, you know, just wear it out. You know, eat three or four hamburgers. You know, just just, just stuff yourself. <laughs> That's what he does. It's part of his beguilement. That's just an example. It's kind of a funny example. I know. But there again, a lot of us like our food. <laughs> a lot of people that like their food. But that's just an example of some one of the ways, many ways, that the enemy is going to beguile you. He beguiled Eve. And in tandem with that, she took it and she beguiled with the same lie, Adam. Now they were both responsible because they gave in. They gave in to the temptation and the beguilement of the enemy. We have got to be stronger than I'm not and I'm putting down the very father and mother of our entire race. But we have got to be stronger than that. 
especially in today's world with all the things going on, all the things that are coming on the earth. We have got to be stronger in the spirit than we have been. we got to quit feeling sorry for ourselves. Uh, today was a borderline day. I'll have to say that. Be give it a personal testament of a, a day of reflection about things that I wish was going on, wish we were doing in the ministry and feeling kind of like, oh, you know, feel bad because, you know, and I, and I hate to say what was me and said, I said, I don't want to sound like what was me, but I put a but after a but this happened and this is happening and I wish this. We've got to be over that and we've got to move on, move forward in the power and strength and the wisdom and knowledge and spiritual understanding and in the power of God, we have to move forward and continue to move forward. Don't stop your momentum. You don't stop the race. You don't get stop halfway and expect to win the prize. You got to run all the way and pass the finish line. Ain't that what Paul said? He ran his race. He finished his course. He kept the faith. He said after that, after, after that was you know he was gonna lay up you know his crown for him. You know he he knew. He knew who he had served many years and who <laughs> who so many years ago arrested him, as we say, on the road to Damascus and, and changed him from Saul to Paul. That was a message I taught, preached, whatever you taught once. I believe it was entitled, Have You Had Your Saul to Paul Moment? Your conversion. You believe now that the Lord exists. You know he saves you. You know he leads you. I can't remember all, all, all the stuff about it because, you know, just to be honest, I've done so many videos and everything. Get a lot of it runs together. But now be a good time. I guess to ask that along with this, once again, have have you had your Saul to Paul moment? Do you know the Lord is merciful to you? You know, and you show mercy. But have you? turned your back on him or have you ever gave him, given him a chance and through listening to this listening to this teaching everything, you're willing to give him a chance you know my, don't you know don't like you know shake your fist up in the air and make a challenge just say Lord if you're real make yourself known to me I don't know how many people have said that I said Lord if you're real make yourself known to me and guess what he, he makes himself known and then they're converted and believed. And they come to the Lord. And they get saved. And praise God, that's another one added to the kingdom of God. Now, I'm not, especially like you know, we say in church, we don't come back there, pull people out of their pulpits, twist arm behind their back, and run them down to the altar and push them down and say, you know, you need to repent, you need to accept this. It don't work that way. The Lord touches your heart, gets into your heart through the preaching, through the teaching of God's word, through his spirit coming into your heart and convicting you of the sins. Aren't you tired? Listen to me, look at me. Aren't you tired of waking up in the mornings hungover? Aren't you tired of being on the pills that when you run out, when you take so many, you run out and you go through withdrawals and you feel miserable? Aren't you tired of living a life of sin and debauchery because it leaves you empty and hollow, nothing inside. God's word says sin is fun for a season, yes. But after a while, it's going to leave you high and dry. Get out of it. Get into the Lord. Let him save you out from these things. You will not regret it, especially coming in when your time it is, whatever your time is. And we're not guaranteed another moment. We're not guaranteed another breath, another day upon this planet. We could be an accident, and that's it. The Bible says, as a tree falls, so shall it lie. Wherever you are, whatever state that you're in, at the time of your death, it's going to determine where you're going. And it's going to, you're going to hear one of two things from the Lord Jesus. People, everybody's going to see the Lord Jesus, yes. But you're going to hear one of two things. Enter in, now, true and faithful servant, because you've been saved. Or you're going to hear, because you haven't been saved, Depart from me, you that work in equity, for I never knew you. And that goes for some people right there who believe they're saved and doing things and everything and doing things their way. And, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm 
not going to get into the the whole church issue about that, about the numbers and mega churches and everything. I know I'm not going to right now. But do you have that full assurance? Do you have do you have that assurance right this instant that you're blessed, Lord, that you're saved, that you know if you close your eyes and you don't wake up on this side of reality on the next that you're going to be with the Lord Jesus for eternity because why? Because you accepted him as your personal savior and you asked him to save you and you repented from your sins and you're walking in God's will now. Don't let anyone beguile you with enticing words at one point it says of man's wisdom. Man's wisdom can only goes so far. As I said, the Lord's blessed us with scientific, medical, all kinds of different things. But we can only go so far. Somebody's dying, and a, a doctor can do all they can to try to save and use me as meds and me and methods and everything. But if it's the Lord's will that that person, his time is up and that they're going to leave this, this side of eternity, then there's nothing you can do. Not a thing you can do in the world you can do. That person is going to leave. But sometimes the Lord blesses and it puts the thought into maybe some of those doctors' heads that are atheists that are, I believe that they are that they can play God all they want to and save people and let people go and, you know, life and death is in their hands. No, no. That was not, life and death is not in their hands. It's in the hands of God. Always has been. Always will. In fact, the devil had it for a short amount of time, a certain percentage of it, I guess you want to call it. The power of death, hell, and the grave, and the Lord took that away from him. Now that whole entire deal is going to be sealed when the Lord comes a second time. He's going to deal with radical evil that's in this world. I'm here this week of the churches, and especially the one, I not give any names or anything, anything that had the, the human trafficking issue. Hey, people out there, if, that, if, that's, if that's a ministry, some the Lord's calling you and get into it because that's just that's just scraping the surface of that human trafficking issue that happened. There's more here in this state, other states around the world. It, it would probably shock and amaze you if, you know, that tale... Uh, or, or, sorry, that 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 veil. I'm sorry, needs to be pulled off. The the mysterium, the the that stuff is being done in secret. You know, stuff was going on in the Old Testament. You know, the the ancients of Israel were doing stuff in the night. You know, worshiping false gods and abominable things and doing all kinds of stuff. You know, but during the day they walk around in their priestly robes and you know doing what they what they were supposed to do supposedly for the Lord and Ezekiel didn't even know about it. the Lord had to show him ask the Lord to show you in your area if something is going on like that and that, that he rips off that veil of secrecy and it may be human trafficking maybe satanic ritual abuse those two things go hand in hand I won't go into details a lot about that. Not yet, because you know this that, that needs that needs to go in the spiritual warfare area of our study. These right here tend to be more family friendly. Uh, those other ones need to, are a little bit more of a serious nature and maybe more adult oriented for those that are saved and grown up in the Lord and are ready for spiritual warfare or want to learn and gain more, more in wisdom and knowledge. So anyway, I tell you what, we we may come out more closer out there for today. We got to chapter four or Colossians two verse four. We we'll stop right there. We may go back there and go a little bit further, just to know what the Lord wants. But if we come to the core of the message today. Seek the Lord, the treasures of wisdom and knowledge in the Lord. And if you have anything that you that you want from the Lord, just ask. This is, he said he would give us the desires of our heart. But I still believe those desires won't be just stuff. Things that are going to be corrupt. You know, back when this was written, you know, they didn't have cars or, you know, 
stuff like that. I believe uh, the world was very much different before the flood. And that's another thing I won't get into right now. That's kind of right up there. But at this time, you know, it was you know back to uh, in a lot of ways to not you know wearing sandals, you know, and just kind of the way it is. Of, you know, kind of the way you see in the news and how it is over in the Middle East and everything like that. It uh, doesn't mean it was always like that. I believe there was things that were going on before the flood that no one has really dug in and aware that was going on. One of the many reasons that God destroyed the world with the flood. But the Lord can bless you with the spiritual wisdom and understandings that we were talking about give you the gifts of the Holy Ghost if you're seeking it. Seeking more of the, the you know, we, we all need more discernment. Be able to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. We need to be to lay hands on the person and cast out the demonic or the unclean spirit. Hey, you can get to the point that you can point out and just say, say depart and that evil spirit and as far, you know, you know, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Let the devil know who you are. I believe that was another message I preached a while back. Letting the devil know who you are. Let him know who you are in Christ. Now you, you get ready. You're going to be tried. You're going to be fought. But if you come through, you're going to come out shining in the end and stronger than you were. Amen. Appreciate you tuning in. I hope this video finds everyone well when you finally see it and know his word won't return in vain. Even if it just reaches a couple of people that needs it, then that's what we want. So... At any rate, uh, just remember our uh, uh, service times, and, and like I said, we'd love, love to have you come out and visit. Uh, just uh, continue to pray and seek the Lord. If you're unsaved and you're getting this and you're listening to it, come to the Lord. It's the, it'll be the best decision that you've ever made beyond anything else, buying a house, car, what, whatever. We're talking about something with eternal ramifications either eternal death uh, yeah or eternal life it's going to be up to you to choose the Lord does not want to push us in either direction we have free moral reign of what we do in this world so at any rate keep that in mind let that thing <clears throat> see laws the Old Testament talks about meditate think about these things Appreciate everyone that's going to listen to this, and I appreciate how God is blessed. Uh, blessed in a mighty way in the last few days, in uh, many different ways. So, uh, I pray the Lord that the peace of God is upon you all, and the blessings in Christ are upon each and every one of you all uh, during these times of trouble. Uh, but we know we have a God and we have a Savior that we can rely on and who can protect us. And we can be like the three Hebrew children, even if we don't, even if he doesn't deliver us in this life, we're going to see eternal life. If, if we've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. God bless each and every one of you, and we will see you in the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.